atomic gigantic occasion was a sweep in Japan nation when along came a dude with an ultra attitude, a common morado who's the greatest kicker of Japan. End of all, man. Last too short now, baby. To not talk big now, baby. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaiju Conversation Live. I'm your host, Elijah, and joining me today is two lovely special guests that are here to tell us all about a project they're working on. So without further ado, let's introduce Miss Kaiju Kim. Hello, hello. How are you? And Mr. Danny Demana. Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going out there? So we're here today talk about a project that both of you are working on and this project has been something in the works for a while from from what i've heard and so i mean there's there's so much to talk about so so why don't we just get right down to business and kim since this is your project let's hear what your role is what you did and we'll go from there uh, so my role in the project, I'm actually wearing a few different hats for this project. I'm the director, executive producer, and the editor. So as the director, I basically am just going to oversee everything and make sure everything aligns with my vision, how I want the film to look, all that fun stuff. And as the executive producer, there's going to be a lot of executive producers for this project because of the Kickstarter perks. But yeah, you know, um, got the Kickstarter page up and running with some help, of course, from lovely, lovely Danny. Thank you so much, Danny, for Lifesaver. Um, yeah, and I'll also be editing the film because that's where most of my talent lies um, in post-production. I'm a video editor by day. So and I love taking footage and basically manipulating it to look and sound however I want. It's that's like my favorite part of production. Yeah, it's really where everything starts to come together and it brings me a lot of joy um, when I have something to edit. So yeah, that's my role in this project. All right. And, and you brought up Danny. So Danny, why don't you explain your role in this project? Um, I'm the guy who dances out in front of the store with the sign. And um, I tell people to, uh, <laughs> to go inside the store and uh, give the people who are like actually doing something uh, important like give them your money um okay no for real um for real i i do not dance i i i do i do a little dancing i do just a little bit of dancing and i tell people to go give kim money but my my main um contribution to this project is that i am the writer for it um i am the the screen writer you could call me for this okay now danny you also have worked on a little project called the Godzilla novelization project, yes. which this is very true, which has included writing each Godzilla film into books, novels, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's so right. That's my baby, how did working on that help you in, in, in this role as the writer for this writer for the screenplay for this project? Man. Um, <clears throat> it definitely helped me in a hand in a handful of ways. Um, it, but the big way, and the one that I think, um, and Kim, go ahead and correct me if I'm uh, being presump- presumptuous on this one, is it gave me experience uh, thinking about, like, a lot. Uh, thinking about and then translating those thoughts into prose, the inner thoughts and um, of the characters, the characters from the films. It allowed me, this project has allowed me to essentially step into the behind the eyes and into the minds of some of the main characters of the films, because just as in the movies, the books that I'm writing are from the perspective of the human characters, right? So you have your, your Emiko's and your Sarazawa's and all that, but Erica is a beautiful example of a character who is talked about in scene, but her perspective is not shown. Um, and that I think that's one of the things that's most exciting about this project to me is I've I've been doing the GNP now for over five years and, and in, during, during that time I've had the opportunity to kind of jump behind the eyeballs and um, put words and thoughts into the uh, the the metaphorical uh, prose mouth mouths of uh, Raymond Burr's Steve Martin. Um, I did a whole short story from his perspective, and I did one. Um, uh, based on Terror of Mechagodzilla, that's entirely first person from Katsura Mifune's perspective. 
that one was really uh, that was a lot of fun to do. I've had a lot of people tell me they enjoyed that one, which is really kind. Um, but being being able to, I guess, maneuver that part of like that part of my writing brain a, a little bit for the this project, uh, or for the GNP, I should say, is definitely going to come in handy here because in the same way I'm able to get behind the eyeballs of like Akane Yashiro from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. That novelization actually flips perspectives and some of the perspectives, uh, some of the perspective will be first person from her brain and what she sees uh, because I find her to be such a wonderful, fascinating, beautiful character. Uh, so stuff like that is really going to come in handy for Erica because like I said before, we, we, we saw her, but we don't, we know of her, but we don't really know her. And it's, I think that's really gonna, um, I don't know. I think it's something that I can bring. I'm trying not to come across as like tooting my own horn here, but, uh, it's something I, I do like to do. And, um, I've been told I'm all right at it. So I, you know, you're I, fantastic. That's why you're you. on the project. Thank you, Kim. I, I let, I, I'm, I'm never going to say it. Everybody else will say it, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling, but there you go. That's my very long answer. So before we get going, because that leads me to a question for Kim. I do want to say hello to Donnie Winter in the chat. Oh, Hi, hey, Donnie. Hey, Donnie. What is up? My twin. Yes. So for anybody listening, and I'll say this throughout, if you have a question, if we have time at the end, um, if, if you, Kim, and Danny are all right with it, I'd love to love to have some questions from the chat if anybody has anything at the end, um, time permitting. So... Danny, you you talked about how um, Kim brought you onto this project. So, Kim, were you the one who assembled all of our all the minds and all the creative people behind this project? I am indeed. So, who else is working on this project besides the two of you? Well, we have Alyssa Sharpentier, aka Alyssa Goji Geek, uh, voicing Erica. And we have Jesse Quails, who runs the CGF Movies YouTube channel, doing the animation. Okay. So first, how did you cast Alyssa as as Erica? Like, what what was the creative thought process behind casting her as that character? Well, Alyssa has this like, sweet innocence about her that, you know, perfectly captures what I perceive to be Erica's personality. You know, Erica's, you know, sweet, innocent soul that becomes corrupted by the Godzilla cells. And I'm a huge sucker for stories where the nicest girl you could ever meet gets a little taste of evil and then embraces it. And it's perfect because, as you may or may not know, Alyssa is also an author and her trilogy of books, the Merc Maiden trilogy, uh, the protagonist is a sweet, innocent girl that becomes corrupted by evil. And so I knew she would understand exactly what I was going for with Erica. And sure enough, when I told her about this project and asked her to voice her, she immediately said yes. Okay, interesting. That's okay. So you brought up your animator, Jesse, mm -hmm. and... This project is is going to need an animator. So where did you how how did you find Jesse? Like where how was that search? Ooh, it took some time to find Jesse. Good lord, uh, it took longer than it probably should have. Um, it's it's hard to find a two D animator in the Godzilla fandom because you see a lot of three D animators, but I specifically wanted two D animation. So I started looking on Upwork. And I actually found someone else who seemed like they, you know, did, did good, do good work. And, you know, um, but this person basically just ignored all my instructions and did their own thing. So I more or less fired them. <laughs> so that was Yay. fun. Uh, so uh, finally, I get around to making a job post on LinkedIn. And in the job description, I say something along the lines of, hey, if you're familiar with the Godzilla franchise, that's a huge plus, but not a requirement. And not too long thereafter, um, Jesse reaches out to me and was like, hey, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I do 2D animation. Here's my reel. Here's my resume. And then I pretty much hired him right on the spot. Okay. So with that being said, what exactly is this 
project. What could you give us a rundown of what Erica is? Uh, I could, but Danny articula articulates it so much better than I can. I don't know about. <laughs> you you do the talk speak much good. Um, are you sure? I okay. I mean, I I I can take it. Um, so we're talking if we're talking plot here. Uh, cast your mind back. The easiest way to do this is to is to approach it from like the most empathetic place possible. Cast your mind back to the opening of Godzilla vs. Biollante, um, when Erika Shiragami dies in the bombing of her father's lab. We don't get. It's just a. I don't know. She maybe has like forty five seconds of screen time, right? But she ends up being. Uh, one of the most pivotal characters in the movie because following her death her dna is taken by her father put into her keepsake roses and then when those roses five years later look like they're about to die he panics and puts godzilla cells in them to try to make them immortal and then um you know shenanigans ensue but when we see the film what we're seeing is basically like the normal perspective we're seeing the other characters reacting to dr shiragami reacting to biolante but there's a perspective in the story that we never get to see and that is erica's because for those five years her soul as we find out later in the film did reside within the roses it wasn't just her dna that was preserved inside of the roses it was her soul it was her spirit and uh, essentially not allowed to pass on she's stuck there and for five years, we can assume that she was silenced, but overall peaceful. But then something happens. The G-cells get introduced. What would it have felt like for the soul of this poor dead girl to suddenly find her realm and herself? She is the rose and the rose is her. What happens to it happens to her, right? How does it feel if you're a soul trapped within this plant and then all of a sudden... You feel the violence and the corruption of these G-cells start to change you and permeate your being. How does that feel? Are you scared? Surely. Are you um, a little intrigued and a little thrilled? Probably. And then what happens when you become so transformed that you lose yourself and you start to just be the monster? Uh, that is implied in the film but it's we don't we don't see that because there's so much else going on in the film that perspective just wouldn't have fit in but implicitly it is there there's an entire other story happening under the surface um the spiritual surface and the scientific genetic surface of the film that we never see so what is it like to live the existence and i'm even, i'm using the word live here in quotation marks what is it like to be erica shiragami what is it like to be alone unheard trapped and then ultimately corrupted into a monster that is what this film is there you go okay so why godzilla versus biolante why why pick this movie um it's one of my favorite godzilla movies of all time um biolante is my favorite non-godzilla kaiju because uh, i just I, I love the rose design the rose form is my favorite favorite form of her because that's, you know, kind of like a mixture of, like, innocence with the rose and then slowly turning into a monster, you know, with the teeth and the vines and all that mm -hmm. fun stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I just I just love it. It, just, it was fascinating to me. Like I said, I'm a sucker for, like, female characters that get a taste of evil, you know, and I think Biollante is, like, the embodiment of that. And so I wanted to make a film based on that. And I don't know if this would be a question more for Danny or you, Kim, but how is it adapting the work of somebody else into something new and, and like adding on to that? I'm sure that's a pretty, pretty difficult task to some point. It is a little difficult, but it's also fun. Um, I like taking characters from movies and TV shows and expanding on them um, in my head. Um, I, I, I usually just do it in my head. This is the first time I'm actually trying to make something based off someone else's work. And it's fun. Wouldn't you agree, Danny? I would. Um, that's, that's what the GNP does. Um, it's, I'm, I, I've, before I have called it, um, a, a, a doughy guy from Ohio standing on the shoulders of geniuses, 
uh, <laughs> because all of the hard work has been done for me, right? Uh, Ish the Ishiro Hondas and Kazuki Omoris and uh, like all those people, the those guys of the world created these films that touched our hearts and they created these characters that um did likewise you know we we remember characters like dr shiragami and dr sarazawa and all these characters but getting in like as somebody like we've all all three of us we've been fans of this stuff for our entire lives and all three of us i would say are, are creative people and it, it it's easy to fall into a, a mindset where you're you wonder about how the characters think, you know, especially for a film that like we've all seen Godzilla versus Biollante 9,000 times, you start to, you can't help but look at the characters and think, what's he thinking in that situation? I wonder how she thinks about this. And that's the fun thing about creating fiction in and around an, a pre-existing set of characters mm -hmm. and a, it, within a pre-existing world, because that groundwork is already laid for you, but in a way, it's an invitation for you to keep thinking about it. And then the ability to act on that by writing it, um, animating it, doing skits, whatever you want to, you know, skywriting, whatever you want to do, however you want to express your love of that thing and your creativity for that thing. Um, it's definitely something that I know a lot of people do. And it's different than coming up with your own world. It's definitely different than coming up with your own characters and world. And in some ways, some like I said, the hard work is done. But in some ways, it's it's it, it's it's more tri tricky in some ways. Um, and it's a little it can be a little intimidating. Um, but more than that, and I think Kim, you'd agree with me, is that it's just fun. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just fun. Um, and that's why we're that's what why I do what I do, Kim. That's why we all do what we do is because at the end of the day, it's just darn fun. So, Danny, you you said it's it is a little difficult sometimes. What what challenges, uh, just off the top of your head, what what challenges are there with with adding to these characters? Well, um, you certainly one thing that I always and this is my one of my cardinal rules of thumb with the GNP is that uh, you respect is a big part of all of this because we love these movies, but. You know, I think I can safely speak for all of us here when I say that we also respect them. We respect the artistry and the creativity that went into them. And even though they're not real people, you do respect the characters as an extension of that. And so you don't want to sit down. I'll use Erica as the, the obvious example here. You don't want to sit down and have her say something that feels out of character. For Erica, it's a little bit different because there's so little of her that's explored in the film. So there is a blank canvas aspect to it, which is really exciting, but you, you also can't push it too far. You can't use it as an excuse to go like full fan fiction, you know, where she's living inside the Rose and finds like a, a, a tiny miniature spirit city and like becomes its queen for five years or something like that's um, maybe in the sequel. Uh, but you know, like that's, that's, that has not, that has nothing to do with the story and it has nothing to do with the intent. And you have to be. You have to honor what the intent of the original character was. Uh, for example, um, and this is something that Kim said really eloquently in the Kickstarter uh, doc, um, description, is that we don't know a lot about Erica, but we do know that she's sweet. She has. She's. She's a kind person. Um, she loves her job. You know. She likes the the idea of bringing life to dead regions of the world. Uh, you know, making flowers bloom. That's something that's important to her. And just from that, you can glean a lot about her personality. And I can now take those things and I can give her an internal monologue. I can give her, I can infer a little bit of her mindset and her world, like the way she sees the world just from that. You can't dive into all of that in the actual short film or else it would be hours and hours of a person just talking. And that's not interesting. Um, you know, would I love to make a five hour movie? um about about her just floating and floating inside the rose uh yeah but no I, it, nobody we, we only it. have seven to eight minutes yeah we don't have that much time it's not going to happen and nobody would watch that because it would be boring um read it sure but watch it no you got to keep people's attention so you have to honor the character understand the character and you also have to realize when you don't want to push things too far you don't want to invent too much you have to be respectful uh, and you have to stay within the limits of 
what the pre-existing character has dictated to you. Like, what are the limits of that character? What would she do or not do? And even if you are inventing some stuff, which by necessity, like I said before, a character like Erica has a little bit of wiggle room. We're, we're doing a, a, you know, at max eight minute, maybe nine minute film here. And you have to also respect the audience's time and you have to respect the, the pacing of that thing. That stuff's important to know when you're writing it so that you can make certain informed decisions, but the audience doesn't need to hear or see any of that. Um, it's the same reason that people will come up with extensive backstories for characters uh, that you don't see any of um, in the film. Uh, one of my favorite examples ever is the Peter Jackson King Kong, where the crew at Weta created an entire in-depth backstory for that version of King Kong about his family and why he is the way he is. All of his scars had stories behind them. You see none of that in the film, but it helped Andy Serkis play the character in mocap. It helps the designers tell his story visually. The audience doesn't need to know any of that. Um, and it's, it, I know that sounds like a lot of work and a lot of thinking for, you know, a character who has 45 seconds of screen time in a Godzilla movie. Uh, but I don't know. Welcome to my brain. What can I, what can I say? Um, and I think that it helps people empathize more. So if, if man, if I can bring just a little of that uh, to this, then um, then I, I I think I think it'll be I, I'll be happy with it. I don't okay, know. Kim, do you have anything to add? Uh, Danny just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> really, again, yeah, just <laughs> respect, respect. It, that's that's all about respect. R E S P E C T. Find out what it means to me. R E S P E C T. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Oh, the stream got taken down <laughs> oh, because you were too good. I, that... I can't help. I can't help it. <laughs> the queen so, has spoken and sung. Before we dive into the backstory, I do want to. I do want to highlight here. We have. Brendan from hey, Artistic buddy. Lizard Productions. Up, Hello, Brendan. Brendan. And then we have Mark Bailey in the chats. Hey, Hello, there Mark he is. Bailey. And uh, he just messaged, uh, Danny is really smart. <laughs> True story. Mark, Can confirm. You're, you're too kind. Thank you. Thank Can you very confirm. much. And you I'll so just sweet. bring it up again before we move on. Any questions, we'll try and hit at the end of the, at the, end of the interview if we have time. So just keep them coming and, and we'll try to get to them. So, I love a good backstory, and it sounds like you guys are, are giving Biolante some backstory, but I would like to know the backstory of how this project came into, you know, on, onto the screen and, and onto Kickstarter for everybody to see. So, Kim, where did this idea come from? So, going back to November 2021 in the middle of the pandemic in-person conventions weren't really happening so the guys from kaiju transmissions put together this uh virtual convention called kaiju Masterclass, um and it was basically just a series of live streams and that featuring special guests and whatnot and there were also some like informational sessions behind the scenes stuff etc and one such session was the making of godzilla versus biolante which was hosted by ed godicheski and I don't remember the exact moment, but it was when I was watching um, this session that something sparked in my brain. It was like, oh my God, we need to know more about Erica. So I was just like, I don't know. My brain was wandering while I was watching this session. And so I just, I grabbed a notebook. Yeah. So that's, that's how it came to be. And I, I initially wanted to make this a live action film. But I have about two dollars and twenty five cents in my bank account right now, Same. so uh, yeah. <laughs> so my option was to be uh, animated and uh, do an animated film. So uh, uh, I had, like I said earlier, had trouble finding a two D animator, so I shelved the project. But fast forward to March of this year. I get bit by the filmmaking bug again, and I decide to revive the project and. That's when I message our good friend Danny of the Gosh Zilly notification <laughs> thingy. <laughs> I'll never live that joke down. <laughs> I yeah, so I, I messaged Danny. I said I basically said, Danny, I have a really cool idea for a short film, and I need your writer brain. 
<laughs> and I said, I don't consult my schedule. Um, I'll get back to you. I've never said yes faster to anything. Um, I get to work with one of my favorite people. And then I find out uh, Alyssa's involved. Oh, I get to work with two of my favorite people. And then I find out, oh, it's Biolante. And it's something that, that can be patted in your head for so long. And you were like, oh, man, I... Um, I was so like, it was a, like a, I was incredibly flattered, um, to be asked to do this. Um, I, I'm still pinching myself, like how cool it is to get to do this. And, um, like the, also the fact that like you, tr you trusted me with it, you know, like this is your baby. This is something that means a lot to you. And, um, that's like having other people come in and collaborate and work on things like that. There's always like a little bit of, at least for me, like a little nervousness that comes with that. Um, and so I, I, I didn't, I have not, not taken it for granted that you, you've invited me into this process and trusted me with uh, helping you tell the story. So thank you again for that. You are the chosen one. The chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> the chosen one. Yes. I, I maybe, I mean, I, the chosen one needs a haircut, I think, but um, <laughs> he's the chosen one needs a haircut and a nap. Oh, the chosen one looks fabulous. Yes. The <laughs> chosen one, you know, you know what the chosen one's keeping the hair. So keeping <laughs> keeping the hair keeping there the you hair. go is that it is now now that i've gotten a compliment i can't get rid of it you know it's got to stay there you go <laughs> so kim you you mentioned the filmmaking bug so mm -hmm. what and this is this is diving a little bit into just you as a person like what what influenced you to want to do this stuff like make films and edit and, and whatnot where where does that come from I've just always had a creative mind. Like my brain refuses to shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you, you, you all both have creative minds. You know what I mean, right? It's just like, <sighs> and I, fun fact, I originally thought I wanted to be a screenwriter. So mm -hmm. I went to a trade school for that. And it was only then when I realized, oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. But I still wanted to like create stuff. You know, and so and that's how I got into, you know, video editing and filmmaking and stuff like that. So that's where that started. Okay. Okay. So you brought up that you need some funds for this. Where can people help you get this idea? Now that we've kind of explored the the background of it, where can people help this create this idea, create this and make this into an actual on on screen full full concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a Kickstarter page that uh, launched about, about a month ago today. Actually, um, we still have twenty eight days left in the campaign. Uh, we are trying to hit ten thousand dollars, which which is I know is a hefty fee, but I want this uh, project to look as close to. Godzilla singular point quality as possible. So yes, Kickstarter, if you can just donate like $1, $10, if, or if you can't donate at all, just share the link, spread the word, and that would really be helpful. So why, I, I'm not too familiar with the crowdfunding uh, world. Why, why Kickstarter? What, what led you to want to pick Kickstarter as the place to fund it? Uh, uh, quite honestly, that's just the first place I thought of. I mean, I, I've seen other ambitious projects like this get successfully funded on Kickstarter. And I thought maybe the same thing would happen for me, but we've been stuck at 35% for quite some time. So it's a little discouraging, but you know, we still got some time. And so with film, and, and you brought up the, the goal, how did you, how did you come up with that? Like... What what's the process in, in figuring out how financing works for for projects like this? Research, uh, like I researched um, like how much it would cost to make like make a film like this, like a short film, and I also want to just make sure my animator gets you know paid what he's worth. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, I want this to look as clean and perfect as possible. So I. I figured it would take maybe about a year to work on it, get get it to that quality. So I think 10K is like a somewhat reasonable um, uh, budget for that. So there you go. That's how I came up with that. Now, I know that you've had to explain this 
a little bit. I've I've watched some of your videos and I've seen some of your some of your posts, mm-hmm. and it's in the FAQ of your Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. So there there is that there historically mm-hmm. was Godzilla Heritage, right? Mm-hmm. That uh, got a little letter in the mail that said to uh, stop all production. Um, now, granted, that was on a very, very much like it was a larger scale when it comes to financing. So I, I, I definitely think there's there's that obvious like Toho isn't going to look at this and say, oh, you're you're, you know, threatening us with your ten thousand dollar film creating um, brand confusion. Yeah. Yeah. But how how do you plan on avoiding that letter? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if there is a way to avoid it, but like, but we are making, we're, we're going to make an attempt by, you know, not, um, not using the names Godzilla and Biolante in the script and all that fun stuff and not showing them like prominently in the film. I think that will help keep us off there. Our keep, keep Toho off our backs. Mm-hmm. So maybe right, okay. Danny. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's <clears throat> the, our technique. So we have a couple of different things that we've done here because prior to this launching um like when i heard kickstarter my first thought was oh time time to time to walk on thin ice um because it's doable um it is it is 100 percent doable but it needs to it all comes back to respect right like yeah are we are we a little are we a little spooked by toho a hundred percent we love you toho but you, you you scare us a little bit um but we also, at the end of the day, like this is this is a, another case of respect because clearly we respect the copyright, and we it's not that we're well, it's not entirely that we're scared to infringe on the copyright. We don't want to infringe on it, and as long as we play it safe, this is technically a fair use, fan created thing. The big the big jam is if we were making this and using the Godzilla and Biolante name and likeness, which we're not doing. And if we were selling it, which we're absolutely not doing, then I would probably call Toho and say, "Come sue us." You know, like <laughs> like they would, they would, they that would be with within every right to um, sue our pants off. But this is a passion project on Kim's part. Um, when it goes up uh, on YouTube, it's it's not going to be monetized. And Kim, your your channel at this point is not eligible for monetization yet. Is that correct? I am nowhere near being eligible for monetization. So even if she wanted to earn money off of this thing through ads uh, at this rate, um, even though she richly deserves to be uh, to to be eligible for her channel, uh, she is not currently yet. And she could not monetize this video if she tried. Uh, So a couple of different things. We've worded things exceptionally carefully um, just within the campaign and the promotional materials. Um, I'm going to actually be making a couple of slight tweaks just to make things as safe as possible. Uh, like, like Kim said, the names Godzilla and Biolante, heavily copyrighted names, uh, will not be used. Uh, this is going to be mostly from Erica's perspective, so we're not going to see the monsters all that much. Uh, use of copyrighted music and sound is not going to be a problem. And, uh, there was even a, a moment where, uh, I thought briefly about like maybe changing the spelling of Erica's name just to be extra careful. But E R I K A is a common, like that's a common spelling of a common name in Japan. So you can't copyright that. And Toho has not copyrighted the name Erica. I don't even think Erica Shirigami has a copyright on it. So again, if we're extra careful with this and um, we also exercise the, what I like to call the Jesus take the wheel clause. uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) where we're 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 kind of like yo um then i i think we should be good now there if toho does say no ho there are a couple of different ways that that could shape up and for the sake of transparency i'll briefly kind of poke at those particular bears um i think a a relatively likely reaction let's say that um the movie is released on Kim's channel. Clearly it cannot be monetized, but it ends up online and it like people love it, but you know, like, which they will, by the way, people will love this, but let's assume for a second that it like, it gets some attention and Toho catches wind of it. They could, and would be within their rights to claim the video as their own and put their own ads on it and use 
Kim's views to generate income for themselves. Um, that's something that Lucasfilm and Disney often do with Star Wars fan films on YouTube. They're they're made with like a hundred thousand bucks to make a really good looking Star Wars fan film, and the people who make them obviously can't and won't make money off of them with ads. But then, to, um, I almost said Toho, Disney will swoop in and uh, they will put ads on those videos. And that's so if you watch a non-profit fan film and you see ads on it it's not the creators being sneaky it's the fact that the copyright owners came in and did that so that's a thing um they might i mean i would think it's very unlikely that they would like ask that it be taken down once created um they would probably see it as a way to generate money for themselves um things like that if they did ask for it to be taken down um there have been previous instances where uh, the creators of the fan films were allowed to distribute those fan films to uh, crowdfunding backers one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a link. Here you can keep it. Don't post it anywhere. Uh, that kind of a thing. So there are absolutely ways to wiggle uh, around this, but um, the, the ideal situation would be us not having to do that. Uh, because at the end of the day, this really is not in infringing in any way. Um, and it's, we're, we're, we're doing our best to just show at the end of the day, we're just trying to show them that we respect the copyright um, and actually follow through by respecting it. And, you know, a couple of little things have to be tweaked here and there to make it work. But um, if, if we play our cards right and thus far, I think we are, um, I think we're, I, I think we'll be, I think we'll be good. Okay. Yeah. So, it is a risk and that's important to talk about. Mm -hmm. So now all of that risk has also been clarified on Kickstarter for, for any backers, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we move on, Adrian is in the chat. Hello, up, Adrian. Hey, man. How's it going? So we brought, we've been talking about the whole Kickstarter and whatnot thing. Now moving past, past the, the, you know the risks how can what 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 can people pledge to to get you know certain perks what how how can people support using the the tiers and pledges that you guys have created $25 gets you a uh, producer credit um and a pdf of the script <laughs> and uh $50 gets you produce I'm tired. her producer credit and a print of the poster, which will be about four by six. That's the most cost effective size that um, is on the artist Tanner Wright's uh, shop there. Um, so that will be given out to most of these uh, perks here. Um, $100 gets you an executive producer credit and along with all that other stuff. And $150 gets you a pre release screening. Um, there will be a special link sent out to them. We'd see the movie before it comes out. And we are also, we also would like to announce that we are adding an additional perk. I was sitting and thinking about this for a while because I, I thought we need a good, like another good physical thing that people can, can take home and have as something to remind them that they did this. And I got to thinking about one of my favorite things to do with the GNP, which is to create um, the stories as in-universe artifacts. Uh, the Steve Martin report that I wrote for the GNP is is the actual report that the character wrote. Um, the Rodan short story I did is uh, Shigeru's journal, for example. The Matango short story I'm working on is the 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 police report. It's the interview that Kasai does. So they all have like a kind of a tangible feeling to them. Like you're taking an artifact out of the world of the film. And I love that idea. And I've backed Kickstarters before that do that. And I love the idea of an element of the story being made real right now. Um, and don't, don't pre-order it because I haven't pre-ordered it yet. Uh, there, <laughs> there's an, they're on Shout Factory right now. Uh, they're selling in Elijah, get ready to smile. The full ALF, all of ALF. Um, and one of the super limited edition things you can get is a piece of the planet Melmac um in in a little in a little box which i think is just wonderful so i thought that's what we need so i am happy to announce that people at um a higher tier we're still working on that um a little bit higher about a we're, we're thinking 100 175 something like that a little bit higher than the um you get you get all the stuff beneath that and then for an extra 25 bucks 
you, direct from the country of Seradia, will get your very own top secret, 100% Biolante ready Godzilla cell to keep for yourself. Um, these are, uh, we're making very limited edition um, G cells that are going to be in uh, basically little plastic petri dishes. Uh, they're going to look like they came right out of the film. I, I'm actually, and this is a little peek into my we weirdness. I am a, uh, a sculptor. I sculpt on the side. I went to school for, for art and sculpture. And I am uh, essentially hand sculpting uh, a, a limited edition set of 10 Godzilla cells. Um, we're not calling them that for reasons. I'm just going to call them, we're probably just going to call them G cells or the sample or something like that. But um yeah, yeah, I'm hand sculpting uh, at the at this at the moment ten G cells. If more people want them, I will make as many as people want. Um, no two will be the same. I'm not making one and molding it. I am hand sculpting uh, ten or more, depending on how many people want. Um, unique chunks of Godzilla skin, uh, complete with gross, bloody back uh, <laughs> that um, I'm putting in these cells. Um, they're they're all handmade. Um, I'm probably going to come up with like a numbering system for them. Um, so that you have like an like you have one out of ten or ten out of ten, whatever. So yes, uh, that will be going up live soon, and we are hoping that that might entice some people to uh, maybe bump their pledges up by an extra few bucks if they're at the top level, or go even higher, um, or uh, you know, people who haven't backed who would like something physical from the campaign. I just thought this was a cool idea, so uh, I. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I'm making I'm making Godzilla cells, and uh, if again, if you want to see what they look like, uh, tune into tomorrow's Chill with Kaiju Kim stream, and uh, I'll have a handful of them ready to show off. Um, so there you go, there you go. If that sounds like something that's your up your up your alley, then look for that to hit the Kickstarter page soon. Well, I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that sounds really cool. That sounds really really cool. Yeah, I hope people like it. Um, it's I, I, it's a good excuse for me to sculpt again. I just I love sculpting. I'm a I I, just, I, I love art. I'm an artist uh, in addition to being a writer. So this is a fun this is a fun chance for me to make fun things for cool people who support us. Okay. So you brought up the pre screening release. Would that how how early like how early would they get that, Kim? Roughly. Uh, I'm thinking like one week before the projected release date, which I'm hoping would be November 1st, 2024. So it would be like October 1st or uh, October, you know, a week before that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're going to be set it up uh, via StreamYard, which is linked to my YouTube channel. Uh, my plan is to, like I said, provide a link for people who selected that tier and, you know, play this film straight from there and uh, stream it out for those people to see. Okay. And... Can people only make those pledge amounts, or is there a way that they can pledge more or less? Or, they, or... They, can pledge, they can pledge more. They can adjust their pledges. I've had people adjust their pledges, like, both up and down. So you can pretty much pledge whatever you want, basically. And you can change that amount any number of times you want until the end of the campaign. If you start out at 10 bucks and you decide we deserve 20 you can change that at any time. And um, if you then decide that we suck and you want to bring it back down to 10 uh you can i recommend not doing that because we don't suck uh and we <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little pompous here and say that kim deserves your extra 10 bucks um also for people who ha may not be familiar with kickstarter it's worth noting um because i do get asked about this uh when you pledge kickstarter does not take your money immediately um in fact if the goal the ten thousand dollar goal is not reached it won't take your money at all uh, Kickstarter is an all or nothing operation. If we get $9,999 um, and then the clock runs out, we don't get a lick of it. We don't get any of it. Um, so if you donate now, you don't pay A, until the end of the campaign, and B, you only pay if the campaign is successful. Um, so there's really no risk to, to to back to like throwing money at it right now. Uh, nothing gets taken out of your account until we hit our goal. And uh, then, then, and only then do we get your, do we get your money? But um, <laughs> we get to, we get to pocket that cash and then immediately uh, give it to the artists. Um, 
because uh, again, this is a nonprofit thing. We're not looking to make any dough off of this. Um, we just want to make sure that the the animator and the artists are paid um, what they are worth. Um, because you can't have a project like this. Again, think about it. Eight minute short film, uh, give or take. Every second of this you're going to see is animated. Every second has to go through an animator's hands multiple times. So you you know this isn't we're, isn't we're not just how we're not hiring actors and going out and shooting things every second of this thing has to be drawn and that that's you can't just throw the you know like the animator 10 bucks and say here uh create eight minutes of you know artistic genius it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work like that um artists are worth a lot more than that animators are worth more than that so that's why the that's why the price tag and there you go there you go i'm I'm rambling again, but that is my prerogative. Indeed. Yes. yes so quite. you brought up how or earlier you brought up, Kim, how this is you're aiming for Godzilla singular, singular point quality animation, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's been that development? Like, uh, uh, so I'm going to get a little filmy here. So I apologize for anybody who doesn't understand my terminology. Like, how many frames per second are you planning on doing? Is it going to be your typical like film? 24. 24? Okay. And how how does that production like what's what's your timeline looking like? You already said that you're aiming for a was it November of twenty uh, four? Yeah, I'm aiming for a November of 24, 24 release. Um, I expect the animation to take at least. Uh, 10 months to 12 months so that's what uh the production timeline is looking like right now okay. always good to overestimate on those things too because mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many kickstarters i backed even from experienced people who've done crowdfunding and done pr film production before and uh you don't get your stuff until a year and a half after they tell you that you're going to get your stuff so mm -hmm. always give yourself wiggle room uh, because best case scenario, you deliver it sooner, and now you're over delivering. But um, normal case scenario, you give your artist the exact amount of time that they need, and mm -hmm. if not, just a little bit of extra time. Yeah. So, in this time frame, are you also going to have all of the dialogue recorded as well? Like how how far along would you guys say you are on that development? Uh, right now, we're just still waiting for the the dang thing to get funded before we do anything. So. Yep. The only thing that's been written is and acted and animated is the teaser trailer. Um, and a lot of that teaser trailer and Kim, feel free, feel free to jump in and, and uh, add to this or correct me. But a lot of that teaser trailer was done mostly for the Kickstarter campaign itself to entice, mm -hmm. um, you know, fans and get their interest. Uh, like th the fact that you see Biolante so much in the uh, in, like in that ending bit, the last shot and so much of Godzilla is seen, that's not necessarily indicative of what's going to be in the final film for legal reasons. Um, but the the goal is for the, the animation to be even better than it's what's in the teaser trailer. Um, you know, it's going to be even higher up on that, on, on the rung, on the quality rung. And uh, that that can't start until um, the animator has some money to, to work with. And again, all the only thing that's been written is what I wrote for the teaser trailer. Um, the only lines that have been recorded are Alyssa's. And um, maybe, can you help me out here, Kim? Who who did Dr. Shiragami? Was that who I think it was? It was my husband. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> was that him? I was like, is that Roy's voice I that's, just heard? That was my husband, Roy. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I I love it. That's awesome. Because I, I heard that and I'm like, who is that? Oh, I, I think I know who that is. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's husband of the year material right there. That's great. <laughs> and that was for trailer two, correct? It's for both. Both, both, both trailers, both. yes. Okay, okay, gotcha. So with that, I, I want to explore a bit more on that. You brought it up earlier, Kim, but you had on your Kickstarter recently an update talking about uh, showing off some of the thoughts behind the project, your brain dump, as you called it, and, mm -hmm. and other notes. So I was reading through those, and what right now, what 
perspective is this project going to be told in? Is it is it going to be in first person? The way I was reading it from that brain dump, it kind of sounded like that. Yes, it's going to be from uh, Erica's perspective, um, basically retelling the events of Godzilla versus Biollante through her eyes. Okay, like like as she is, we were going to see her in the lab. We're going to see her like in the void, like as she's like her souls in the roses, and then we later transforms into Violante, all that fun stuff. So yes, it's going to be from her perspective. Okay. And so how many characters roughly are going to be in this film? Uh, let's see. I definitely... Uh, Erica, obviously. Uh, not sure, Um Not all of them are going to be necessarily speaking roles, but I definitely want to have like Mickey and Asuka in there. Because, you know, at, at one point during the film, like, Mickey, like, translates Erica's crying as, Asuka, please help. So, I've definitely got to have that in there. Uh, so, I'm thinking maybe, like, four, five characters, on the, and maybe two or three of them have speaking, speaking roles. Okay. So, I was also reading it, and out of curiosity, besides Godzilla vs. Biollante, what other films inspired you on this short film? Was there any other ones that you kind of took influence from or, or were inspired by to help create this idea? I feel like there was something. There was something. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there was definitely something that was similar to this that inspired me. Can't, can't think of it right now. I'll probably think of it when we're done recording. <laughs> was it a was it a, a film um tv show book you read i think it was a book hmm okay yeah i think it was this book called devoured and it was, i don't remember it's, it's i haven't read it in a hot minute but um this uh this girl she had a twin sister who died and like she sees her every once in a while so yeah some, some something like that i think i think that was the that was the one yeah interesting okay if you think of the name let let me know because i'm gonna have to add it to my uh my my list of books <laughs> okay i'm always looking for new books all right so also in that in that update was some other notes that expanded upon your brain dump and, and your ideas so are you using just the like the script that was used in the final project for Biolante, or are you also taking some ideas from some of those earlier drafts from uh, Shinichiro Kobayashi? I was thinking about taking some creative liberty with it because I do like the idea. One of the things in my brain notes was my, my brain dump notes was uh, there was a deleted scene in the film where um we see the bio major agents come in to steal the papers on the anti-nuclear energy bacteria and Dr. Shirogami catches them and they take the rose that is currently being transformed to Biolante and they threaten to burn it and then they leave and then that's when she kills the bio major agents. I kind of like how that goes down better than in, in the final film. So I think I'm thinking I might go that route. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Yeah. Okay. You also cited the Incredible Hulk as an influence for Erica's relationship with Biollante. Mm -hmm. So are you going to also kind of follow in line with, with that that concept of the tragedy of, of the monster and, and the like the human side of all the monsters? Like how how are you going to like what what ideas do you have for kind of emulating something like in, in the Incredible Hulk? Uh, basically just like how Bruce Banner, like, you know, he, he blacks out every time he becomes the Hulk. That's the same thing happens with Erica, basically. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I didn't study for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as already established, it's going to be uh, released on YouTube on your channel, correct, Kim? That is correct. And... For anybody who doesn't know, what uh, what is your channel? Just for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, my channel is Kaiju Kim. So that's simply two words, Kaiju Kim. Okay. <laughs> I like Kaiju and my name is Kim. It's, it's, so, pretty, it's pretty simple, folks. Okay. 
So out of curiosity, do you is there any possibility for leftover funds for the film to to be there or is it all going to end up going to the animator? If we do have um, some leftovers, I would like to pay everyone who's working on the project. But okay. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes down. Okay. And one of the biggest things about any project is the promotion. So I've seen you've been posting videos on your YouTube channel. You know, you're doing interviews, you're doing live streams. What other, and you've, you've done two teaser trailers. Mm -hmm. What other uh, promotional ideas do you have? I mean, obviously you guys just announced that you have a new tier coming uh, for that Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Is there any other ideas like any Biolante, uh, I don't know, puppet shows that Danny will host or anything like that? <laughs> oh, don't tell I mean, me. I I'm not I'm not opposed to that idea actually. <laughs> I if you had me at puppet show, um, I'm I'm in. Um, I will get started building my Biolante puppet um, immediately. Uh, Excellent. I'm, I'm in. I want it on my desk by Monday. She's get, <laughs> she's gonna sound like Miss Piggy. It she'll be beautiful. Um, the uh, I, I mean, aside from all that stuff, um, it's been like one of the things I've been doing is i've been like sharing i mean I, I shared like just simple stuff like not sharing the link obviously is a that's a big one uh sharing ah, let me try that again screenshots from the trailer um because those immediately like capture the eye and there are some really beautifully striking moments in that trailer like the eye looking through the the microscope and actually there's a really great focus on eyes in the trailer anyway godzilla's eye Erica's eyes open. Um, so there are a lot of like really captivating shots that almost feel like they're looking back at the viewer. So just putting those online got some response. Um, I have also been putting um, behind the scenes and like the fun fact, like trivia stuff involved that involves Godzilla versus Biollante on my uh, uh, the, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Um, that's been, <laughs> That's been fun. I actually had, I think it was last week, I did, I posted some behind the scenes images of um, the making of the Biolante suit, and I that tweet got like thirty five hundred hits or something ridiculous. It was a lot, and I you know I posted that, and then immediately after I posted, I didn't think that many people would click it, but I I did that, and then right underneath that, the pin, the tweet right underneath that is the link to the Kickstarter. So. That's the potential for, oh my gosh, 3,500 eyes to see it. Now, not all of them are going to click it, um, you know, and, and very few are going to like actually follow that link. But that's still the fact that like however many hundred plus people retweeted that now have the Kickstarter link on their <laughs> on their Twitter feed. So by sharing these cool pictures, they spread the link for us, uh, which was, you know, kind of some. There's a marketing word for that that I can't think of. Um, sneaky. I'll just say sneaky. Uh, so I, <laughs> I gave people like this cool, these cool pictures and like, hey, look at this. Because people like behind the scenes pictures on Twitter. It's not rocket science. And I threw the link on the bottom. And now all these people shared the link without knowing it. Uh, so there you go. Um, and, you know, people probably clicked on that and thought, oh, okay, whoa, wait a minute. What's this? So there you go. That's an easy way to do it. Um, the other thing is, I mean, Kim and I have not shut up about it. Um, nor will we we're not going to stop we won't shut up about erica we won't shut up about erica uh we're not it's not going to happen um you've got two more streams coming up here kim i'm on the one tomorrow with Alyssa, mm -hmm. and then you have one with the uh the animator coming up here in a week or two uh, yeah and, uh, on um, the 16th the 16th two weeks okay two weeks and so yeah, we're gonna keep doing that stuff. Um, we've also got some invites. Obviously, uh, we're doing this show, and then uh, Nick Poling at the Monster Report uh, has invited us to come on. So we're we're definitely leaning into uh, the the people who think we're cool. Um, because yeah. here's a little uh, secret, quote unquote secret for everyone out there. Uh, everyone thinks Kim is cool. Oh, I don't uh, know about that. Nah, it's it's true. Uh, like people, one of I, I on, and I've said this in private, but like one of the reasons, legitimately, why I think people really are excited about this project 
is because they know and trust you, Kim. Uh, you are a major part of the appeal of being a part of this. It's true. It's true. It, no, no, no. It's it's true. It's true. It's true. It's one hundred percent true. So people are happy to help, um, and that's another thing is that we, you know, without even really asking, um, you know, people like you, Elijah, um, our friends at the 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 nut house that is kaiju ramen media and um you know friends out there like adrian who's listening adrian has shared that link i I don't know how many times and i i love him for that i love adrian for a lot of reasons but that's one of them um so we've had we've had people who again have seen this and they 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 know kim's involved and they're they're sharing it around because they know and trust her abilities and also the idea for this film is really, really strong. So people are sharing it just, just based on that. And um, yeah, we've, we've really been, again, without like getting on our knees and begging, people have volunteered their time to help us. People have, without us asking, shared the links around. So it's been really, it's been really, really nice to know that we have a community of people that are, uh, that are helping out with this. And they, they want it made just as much as Kim and I do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, going off of that and, and talking about the promotion a bit, uh, I was privileged to be present at when this got announced. So that was it was announced at the Chill with Kaiju Kim Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla anniversary panel at G-Fest. Mm-hmm. So, Kim, what made you decide to, to choose G-Fest as, as the announcement for, for this project? I figured it was the perfect opportunity to get as many eyeballs on this project as possible because I'm I'm in a, in a room full filled with Godzilla fans, right? And I had the floor, so this was my time. This, okay. this was my time. It was the perfect time. And in that trailer, so was that Jesse who animated that and Alyssa doing the, the yes. voice work there? Okay. Yes. And then you also posted a poster as well for for this now let me i have the poster here so let me uh pull it up here in just a second who did this poster to be exact uh the poster was done by tanner wright a very very talented artist i like his style and so he was the chosen one as well a lot of chosen ones for this project yes the uh you you were like the nick fury and we were your uh oh i don't even want to say this eric avengers i said it i said it i can't believe i said it i apologize i it's out there now we'll we'll work on the name thank thank you we will (laughs) we probably won't we should probably just abandon this whole joke abort 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 eric avengers oh god why do people talk to me I don't understand. Because you're special. Oh, thank you. I I think. (laughs) (laughs) I think. Special, special. all right. You're special to me. Oh, the Kim. Bless you. You're sweet. Where's that? Where's that poster? We're talking about Mister Mister Wright. Tanner Wright's awesome too. Tanner Wright is a cool dude. Um, and he was. Oh no, I I can't. I'm gonna do it. He was the right choice. For this poster. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Tanner will never talk to me again. Sorry, Tanner. Oh, no. People are leaving the stream. Oh, what have no. I done? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. We done goofed. We did. And... No, I done goofed. <laughs> this is on me. What a beautiful poster. Uh, I literally gasped when I saw this artwork. It was like, <gasps> it's it's everything I wanted. It's the rose form of Biolante on Lake Ashi. And it's just so gorgeous. Look, just just look beautiful. So why choose the rose form as the poster art for this? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I do love the rose form of Biolante and just like the, the rose. It, I, roses are my favorite flower, basically, because, uh, because I'm a typical female. I like red roses. <laughs> How dare you? I'm basic. How dare you have taste in beautiful flowers? How dare you? <laughs> I'm basic. I'm sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. Um, I just, it's just such a beautiful form. I think Violante is such a beautiful creature. I love it. Okay. I think this is the form, at least for, for my money. I had, I mean, I, I want it made clear. I had nothing to do with the decision making on, on that. Uh, the, but just, just for me, when I think of, 
like Erica's association with Biolante, I think of the rose form first. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it's the version that's closest to her, you know, like, exactly. I don't know. Exactly. It's the, it's the, it's the sad version that crawled out of the lab, right? It's the, it's the one that has the sad cry. And I always think that's, like, I feel like that's Erica's voice to some degree. Yeah. It's the only thing she can do to cry out because she can't be heard inside of the rose. So when I think of the sadness and the tragedy and the melancholy of Erica, I think of the sadness and the tragedy and the melancholy of that big sad rose in the middle of that lake just crying to itself. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just me. That so that I think that's a good choice to go with the rose form. Plus, mm-hmm. it's just cool. It is cool. cool. Low key, low key might be my favorite of the two forms for that reason. Mine too. Um, hard to pick because the adult form is one of the best things ever in a Godzilla film. It is so film. cool. So where can people find updates on the on this project as it continues to develop? Uh well I I'm gonna I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm I'm still calling it Twitter. Yeah, um, good. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> My subtle form of protest. Yeah. Um so at Kaiju Kim on there and also on Instagram, Kaiju underscore Kim. And I'm also on Discord. Um, I have a Discord server that I give. I can if you, if a, if you message me and I, if I like you, I'll give you a link. But <laughs> okay. yeah, that's where you can find me. And oh, but my Facebook group K Force Lounge is also where I am. Yes, very good. Okay. And so, how has the Kickstarter done so far? Not great. It it went. It was off to a great start at the beginning, and then. We've been kind of stalled at, you know, 35, 40% for a while, but, you know, we still got some time. So I have a, some, a sliver, a sliver, a sliver of hope. Okay. Sliver. Words are hard. And I know, I, I feel like I, I, we've kind of journeyed through, through most of this, but is there any other details you can share at the time for this project? Uh, I think we covered everything, didn't did, did, did we? I think I think pretty much everything is has has been laid out. Um, to to get into any more specifics would be to do two things: one, to spoil the movie, and b, to tread into territory we haven't actually planned out yet for the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're still because... we're still uh, very much in the planning stages because, like like I said, we're still waiting for the dang thing to get funded before we uh, make yeah. any moves. It's one of those those things where um, work can't really be done until uh the you know a timeline is set and the timeline can only be set when the money hits the bank um so once the you know that the money is in the bank the kickstarter's over and all that good stuff um if it's successful then at that point we can really get a timeline hammered out um the animation is really is going to be key here but obviously Alyssa can't record anything unless i write it so i need to get to work on uh, writing it which means that kim and i need to um to sit down and i need to know like i'm i'm not just going to go off and like invent something this is kim's oh, yeah. baby here so her she's going to tell me what she wants and i'm going to sit down and i'm going to try to make it as i'm going to try to make it cool if if I can if if I can create something that's half as cool as what's in Kim's head, uh, <laughs> then I'll I, I will be I will be pleased. Um, but my yeah. my job is to is to just sit down and take Kim's vision and try to take take good care of it. That's my job. Yes, I'm also look want to look into getting a storyboard artist. Um, Danny, you know someone very 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 talented that mm-hmm. I've leaped off at G Fest. Yes, so. a good a good friend of mine um, is uh, on tap right now in consideration. Uh, but again, those conversations can't move forward unless we have a film locked in. Um, yes, there have also been conversations about other aspects of the production. Um, we we briefly toyed with uh, composing an original song, <laughs> which mm-hmm. who knows if that'll end up happening. Um, and then there's also the question of like music itself for the for this film because we're not going to pull you know uh, Koichi Sugiyama's music because mm-hmm. copyright. So anything you hear will have to be um, either like a kind of subtle kind of sort of not really please don't sue us cover. Mm-hmm. Um, of what we hear, or it's going to have to be entirely original or a combination, uh, all that good stuff. But those are all questions that have to be answered uh, once the project is locked in and moving forward. Okay. So 
I know that it's still very early, but if there's one thing you could promise for the listeners and the people backing the project, what's the one promise you could give them? <sighs> one promise we can give them is we won't shut up about Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's pretty much all we can promise them at this point. Yeah. Okay. So I just have one last question for Danny here, and then uh, we'll do we'll do the most noblest of of podcasting <laughs> traditions. So Danny, how's it? How has your experience so far been working with Kim and and, and working on this project? Kim is a cruel leader. Um, <laughs> I hate everybody. She is like, you guys don't even know. Um, I have felt so like, I, I've, I feel like my life has been in danger several times. Um, she's like, I'm look at what, look at what she's doing right now. Look at this. Look at this is, this is the nightmare I have to deal with. I said, yes. So it's on me. She's, she's, I, I, I always feel like Kim is watching me and I got no privacy. Um, <laughs> Working like this has been, and again, all like my, the extent of the work that I've done so far, aside from jabbering about this thing every chance I get, uh, is writing the 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 script for the teaser trailer, and the process for that was really wonderful. Um, I actually so I wrote it and um sent it off to sent it off to Kim. She gave me really wonderful notes and guidance. Like this is this is great could we like, this is another idea I had. Can you move this part around and then write another section that deals with this? This is something I saw in my head. So I would do that. And we went back and forth, I think maybe just three versions or something like that. And we locked it in. And so the process itself is great. Uh, Kim uh, knows exactly what she wants from this thing. The vision is in her head. And just like with any film, it's the job of the people who surround the creator of that project, the visionary behind the project, to just do whatever they can to help get that vision out of the person's brain. Um, and so that's that's what that's that's what I'm doing. And thus far, um, aside from the the personal threats and um, the fact that Kim uh, beat me up with my own squeaky hammer um, at G Fest. Like chased me around with this hammer and beat the tar <laughs> out of me. It was really, uh, it was really humiliating. Uh, but no, she. It, it's been, it's been, it's been really, really wonderful. Um, Kim, in a statement that will shock absolutely no one, is a sweetheart of the highest order, and uh, is also incredibly talented. And like I said, she knows what she wants. So working with somebody with a clear vision is really, really helpful when you're trying to coax that vision out. It's been really wonderful so far. Uh, hearing, Al I hearing Alyssa de like deliver the lines that I wrote was like chill inducing. Um, that was really powerful. Uh, really, really good. I can't wait for her to get to do the whole role. Um, because she's going to give people chills. Um, she was the perfect choice for this, and it was really, really surreal to hear words that I'd written be spoken by her so wonderfully and set to animation that was done so beautifully and all guided by this, this idea that Kim has. Um, and one thing I will throw on as my own little, just knowing what Kim has in store, my own little, like one thing I know I can promise is that uh, this is a, an idea, a concept, a vision um, that 110% deserves to exist. And it's something that people are really going to love when it comes out. I think people are really, gonna connect with it it's something that i've never seen done before in this space and i really hope that we get a chance to bring it to all of you okay. yeah so is there any any final statements any anything else that i failed to cover that you guys want to want to mention or anything else mm -hmm. yeah i think i think that covered everything okay yeah that the, other than the fact that we're currently in talks with Arrow Video to release this on 4K Blu-ray, yes, that that's um, it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's that's definitely that's definitely happening. That's we are one hundred percent true and not and not, not a lie at all. Not a lie. We are fully within our legal rights to do, <laughs> to do it. Uh, that will not bring the wrath of Toho down upon us at all. Um, of course not. Yeah, no, no, clearly not. Um, one hundred percent mm -hmm. free on Kim's YouTube channel when it comes out. I am just being a sarcastic, silly face. 
Well, I have one last thing here to bring up, and then we'll we'll uh, end on the most noblest of podcasting traditions, as I like <laughs> to dub it. Indeed. So for anybody listening or watching this, please go check out this, support it. It's on Kickstarter. Go to kickstarter.com forward slash projects forward slash Erica Biolante and back it. Please back this project. It's it's I've backed it myself. It's a great project. I'm I'm super excited to see it happen. Um, I I fully trust both you, Kim, and you, Danny, with your ability to succeed. You guys have done amazing work. Um, I'm so grateful. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview. I like I said, just back this, support it, spread the link, share, um, get word of mouth out. It's this project is is something that needs to happen. So please, if you can support it any way you possibly can. Uh, I'm saying that out to all the viewers and all the listeners to this when it ends up going live on the podcast feed. Thank you guys so much. And to wrap this up, please uh, help me in conducting the most noblest of podcasting traditions, the self-promotion. Don't you mean the shameless self-promotion? (laughs) <laughs> we we like to avoid the Nathanisms on 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 kaiju conversations. <laughs> oh no! I see. Yes, so okay. shameless self promotion then. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, also known as X, at kaiju kim. You can find me on Instagram, at kaiju underscore kim. You may join my Facebook group, K Force Lounge. Thank you. It's beautiful. I'm I'm crying. I'm crying right now. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes, Elijah. When you do the final feed, you have to put the Moonlight Sonata music in all over top of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, it's I, it's mandatory. Real. It is mandatory. <laughs> um, okay. Um, my turn. I, I, it's weird. I actually, I don't have to talk about Erica. This like for in my, in my promote, hello, my promotional section. I've been doing that for so long. Um, so I've, I've talked about it a little bit here. Um, the, the Godzilla novelization project is my main jam in the, uh, the community. If, uh, the idea of reading the Godzilla movies as prose novels sounds like something you could get behind, then, uh, head over to get this Godzilla novelization project.com. I know sneaky. Um, There you will find all of the chapters as they are published, uh, serialized one at a time. Um, There are no complete books on the uh, the, on the the website yet because I'm jumping around and doing different ones to kind of create a uh, a variety. Um, Hoping to have one of them done here soon, though. So that is that that is the goal. Uh, There are also, as I alluded to, short stories, and also as I did not allude to, a blog and uh, timelines, all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, if you want to follow along with this project, root me on, accuse me of ruining your childhood. Uh, maybe not that last one. Uh, you can definitely check me out on the artist formerly known as Twitter. Um, I, I'm, I don't, I don't know what to call it anymore. The world makes no sense and time is a flat circle. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm just going to say it at uh, Danzilla 93 underscore GNP, where you will find project updates. I'm uh, tweeting a lot about Erica right now. I share like really bad dad jokes and uh behind the scenes pictures and films film anniversaries and like i just celebrate godzilla without being like super critical like that that's just my jam i I create a nice happy family friendly space for people to come hang out so that's that's that you can hear me wax philosophical about kaiju and giant monsters and various nerdy type things on uh, kaiju weekly every sunday night as a co-host and i've also been on a, a thousand and one different giant monster podcast have been on the monster island film vault as a co-host and uh as a voice actor you can catch me on there playing multiple characters i play um i I played dr sheeta in the godzilla on made episode bride of godzilla a handful of years ago so i'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff i'm voice acting i'm co-hosting podcasts i write for kaiju ramen media and kaiju ramen magazine i've written for g fan I'm um, currently working on some non-Godzilla-related personal writing projects, including um, what I'm hoping will be my first full-length novel, hoping to get that out eventually, um, and a non-fiction book. Um, 
which will has not again it's monster related but it has nothing to do with godzilla because i am into other things um i know it's shocking i know i know that's not allowed but uh there i like other monsters that aren't just godzilla um i know it's really bad but uh that's that's me if you if the, the idea of listening to me prattle on sounds like a fun time my website the gmp website does have a press and appearances page where all of like most of my stuff is linked and you can just go there and click it all and it'll take you where you want to go but um my big jam right now is telling people to back erica or else okay maybe not that um <laughs> i don't want to threaten anybody but do it back the project please do, please <laughs> <laughs> please please dear god give us the money <laughs> Please. That was that was too perfect. That was awesome. <laughs> there you go. I have promoted myself mostly shamelessly, but not entirely. I failed. Okay. Okay. That's true. Well, and with that, we're gonna wrap things up here. My name is Elijah Thomas, the host of Kaiju Conversation. Rex couldn't make it due to Australian time zones. Gotta love it. If you want to support me, you can find me on Twitter at ET13 Productions, on Instagram at ET13 Productions, or on YouTube at ET13 Productions. I'm the production manager, video manager, and staff writer for Kaiju Ramen Media. You can check me out on kaijuramenmedia.com, where we just put up pre-orders for Kaiju Ramen Issue 10, covering Godzilla's Greatest Foes, where I got to interview Donnie Winter. Woo. Uh, along with that, you can find me on the weekly Kaiju Weekly Show every Sunday night. Uh, besides that, I have done a little writing myself. Besides Kaiju Ramen Magazine, I wrote for Giant Bug Cinema, a Monster Kids guide on the film Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Besides that, uh, I have appeared on a handful of podcast shows. So uh, if you want to go to ET13 Productions, it's under a uh, playlist for a lot of my appearances. I don't have anything cool like a website like Danny, so uh, oh, maybe one day. Maybe <laughs> one day. But as for the podcast, don't forget to write us on iTunes that boosts our ratings and helps us get recommended to more people just like you. If you don't have an Apple device, which I don't blame you, I don't actually, that's 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 a lie. Um, this is a MacBook I'm staring at right now. So uh, <laughs> that's a lie. But you can write us on Spotify now. That's the new new thing they're doing. If you want to stay up to date with all things Kaiju Conversation related, follow us on Twitter at K-A-I-J-U underscore C-O-N-V-E-R-S. If you don't have Twitter, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If you're like me before podcasting and you don't have any social media, lucky you, you can email us at kaijuconversation at gmail.com, all lowercase, all one word, you know the drill. And as always, we'll read your reviews on air for everyone to hear. We also have a teespring store eventually we'll have original artwork on there but until then you can sport our awesome logo on a t-shirt or maybe even like a coffee mug or something if you'd like to chat with me or rex or anybody who likes kaiju stuff check out our discord server full of others that have similar interests to you it's a great community full of great people don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime we upload a video. We do these monthly live streams, Kaiju Conversation Live. We also post exclusives to the channel like bloopers or from episodes or minisodes talking about other subjects. We also have an interview with the 2021 Mechagodzilla designer, Jared Kurchevsky. I definitely butchered his name. I'm so sorry, Jared, but you can check that out on the YouTube channel. A huge thanks to Rex for editing all of the episodes and the awesome intro you saw at the beginning of this. Please check him out. His stuff can be found in the description below. I will also make sure and put the link to Erica on Kickstarter in the description below. I've posted it in the comments. So please, again, go check out Erica. Along with Rex, I'd like to give a huge thanks and shout out to Danny DeManna of the Godzilla Novelization Project for his amazing vocals on our theme song, you can support him by following him on Twitter at Danzilla93 underscore GNP or visit his website, GodzillaNovelizationProject.com. And a huge thanks to Grattan Conwell for the podcast Giant Monster BS for composing the music for our theme song. You can support him by following the podcast on Twitter at Giant Monster BS or on any podcast platform under the name Giant Monster BS. 
And with that, we're going to wrap up this interview. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you so much, Danny. This was a great interview. I am so grateful. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having us. We're grateful to you, man. Thank you for taking the time and coming up with such thoughtful questions for us. Uh, yeah, this was this was a lot of fun, and it, we really appreciate your your support on this. Your your honest to God and exuberant support. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So. All I have left to say is to the viewers, thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, please remember, life's too short to not talk big. Bye, guys. We are set. We are in debt. There's nothing to sweat. Life's too short now, baby. Not too big now. So Rex now, baby. We love those kaiju, baby. And you will too now.